Welcome to Comexpose Converge 2020. This is the biggest of the digital art and innovation in Zimbabwe, showcasing the best in animation, augmented reality, comic art, gaming, virtual reality, visual effects, film, and digital media all across the country. This is the sixth edition of the annual convention, and this year it's going all digital. My name is Bill Masuku. I'll be your host today. Uh, I am a comic book artist and writer and author of the Misfortunism series. Today, uh, we have an amazing guest with us. This is today, Martin, um, who needs no introduction. Um, I mean, you could Google him if you want. Like that list is long of achievements, but let me not um, let me not guess him up too much. He can do that himself. Jide, please let us know uh, about you, your works, and um, the comic book industry in Africa. All right, thank you very much, Phil. Um, I do need to gas myself because I'm not sure half of the people out there know who I am. <laughs> but um, I'll just say one word, I'm a geek. I have a confession. Yeah, I, I like reading comics. Um, I'm all about superheroes, but most importantly, I'm about being African, being black and all the beauty that comes with it. Um, and because of that, um, some time ago, I decided to start a comic book company that will showcase the best of us, the best of, you know, Africa, the best of uh, being of African descent, no matter where you are in the world. And we wanted to, you know, um, dominate a space that was already dominated. Um, and, you know, I, I had this dream where we stopped being the minority and we are part of the picture. You know, it's no more about, um, um, there, there's not, it's about diversity, it's about acceptance. And, you know, we needed the world to understand that you can save the world no matter the color of the skin, no matter the color of your skin, no matter where you are, um, all you need is the will to do good and you can be a hero. And Africans are more than able to take on the job of saving the world. And, you know, that's how Comic Republic started. And luckily for me, um, I, I am the chairperson of an awesome team and we create awesome comic books every two weeks. So yeah, that's what we do at Comic Republic. That's, and, and you wanted me to say all that, like I wouldn't have had that, that much heart behind. This is why I let you speak like that. Like a lot of the time people have elevator pitches and it's like, oh, we do this, 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 but it's always lacking in the heart, you know? It's always lacking in the why do you do this, right? It's, it's always how and when but man, that was, that was powerful. Thank you, thank you so much um, uh, for the introduction. Um, and I guess, so you've been doing this for a number of years now. Um, and I guess my first question would be, knowing what you know now, um, what would you do differently if you had the chance to start over? Oh, that's a very good question. What would I do differently? I would have started a lot earlier. Uh, I mean, there, there was, you know, loads of, you know, doubt, you know, loads of people saying this wouldn't work. Um, I had the same formula that I, I, I had to start it a couple of years earlier. I just needed to go through that process where I could feel like I was enough to do this, you know. And I feel like if I started a lot earlier, Comic Republic would have made the impact that it should have made a lot earlier. Um, it's not too late, you know. But, you know, I do feel like I wish I had more time to be able to achieve a lot more because I have big dreams for the continent, you know, and for, you know, people in diaspora, you know, and I hope that, you know, um, with grace, I'll be able to, you know, bring those dreams to life. But still, I wish I started a lot earlier. Yeah, definitely. So in my research of just African comic book creators and African comic books, Around 2015, 2014, there was just this wave of people coming out with new content with, well, number ones, right? Especially there were a lot of superhero comics that came out around that time, South Africa, Nigeria, West Africa, Central Africa, and so on. Uh, we're all had, we all had this like push. Um, and I still can't answer what it is, but definitely I think there is something in what you said that there's, there was doubt in creation, not just, making the story but like putting putting a book together as a whole uh completing a number one that's one of the hardest things to do um when there's no precedent for it 
Um, so thank you very much for starting when you did. It doesn't matter uh, when you start, as long as you move forward, as soon as you um, put your boots on the ground. That said, um, I think sometimes the marketing um, in, uh, in African comics usually gets lost in, in, a, in a grander um, conversation. You had spoken earlier about the market's already dominated. We want to dominate, right? Um, and I think I can, I can paraphrase that in saying that there are loud voices already at play and we need to make our voice collectively as Africans, because it's not a country, we need to make our voice loud, if not the loudest that people in our immediate vicinity and around the world can hear. Um, so the core of my question is, it's kind of in parallel with what Japan does. It's not what it does, it's just who they are. The word for comic book in Japan is manga, right? And that drastically changes how people look at something. When someone says it's not a cartoon, it's anime, that changes how you, how you think about what you're watching or what you're about to consume. Is there a word, and forgive me, there's like 200 dialects in Nigeria, uh, 200 languages and dialects. Is there a word that is specific to the meaning of a paper medium with words and and, and images also a comic book um, in Nigeria that's, that's uh, evident. And if there is, what would that change about the marketing of comic books from Nigeria? You, you've asked um, an awesome question because it's something that even Comic Republic has done a research on. We've seriously been thinking about, you know, if we were going to call comics that originated from Africa, what would we call it? And, you know, after, you know, put, putting a team together, doing research, and this was about, you know, almost three months of research, we came out with what we knew was the best name for art coming out of Nigeria, right? And I'm going somewhere. And, you know, and for us, it was important that we found a name that would portray, um, you know, the majesticness of art, if I could use that word. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and we, we, we looked at, like you said, Nigeria, especially where I'm from, has many cultures and we were looking for the one with the longest root and we came up mm. with the word Inca. Um, oh. Yes. Now, Inca is a word that originated from the Igbo tribe in Nigeria. Um, and for years, it's been an art form where we sculpt and we tell stories through sculpting. Um, and it's also be it's also has been recognized worldwide. There's actually an Inca Institute. There's an Inca magazine. Yeah, if you just Google the word Inca art, you would find it. It's been around okay. years. and it originated from Igbo culture, which is Nigeria. So okay. and you know, it, it's kind of funny because Inca kind of sounds like ink. Mm. Yeah. And, like you know, I see, like I see you. I don't think right? I see you. I see you. Yeah, you know, and we are even when we decide to go on this campaign, we're going to add an extra A to it. And why? Because we believe that first A is excellence, is the first word is alpha. And we say mm. Inca A, so that African art is alpha. That's one. Yes. But also Inca Africa. There's yes. Inca, you know, adventure. There's Inca yes. action. There's Inca. Yes. I could go on yes. about how awesome the term Inca would be <laughs> as you, um, a symbol for art. And, you know, we could tell people, have you picked up an Inca? You know, and I, we, we feel that that would trend. So from Comic Republic, we do believe that the word that should symbolize art from Africa should be called Inca. Um, but I could go on. Like I said, we did a whole research on it. So we're ready when, when, when if, if we come up with that, we could champion that easily. That's, that's amazing to hear. Like I knew that there was something in the works because you're always doing something. Every two weeks, you all, you all got something new. Um, and yeah, definitely that word is now solidified into the research that I'm doing. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Um, and I'd love to hear more about that, uh, but sadly we have limited time. Uh, I have one more question for you if I can remember it. Wait, yes, 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 yes. So if you could cross over, right? Rather, crossovers and cameos are often big hits in media, right? So it doesn't matter if it's like a Scooby-Doo and Supernatural or just two things that are completely unrelated, right? 
um, it usually yields both audiences coming together for something truly fantastic. And people ask for more, but usually a one-time thing is great. So the question is, is there any superhero um, from the continent that you would like to see your heroes team, one, team up with? Uh, from another comic book company? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, awesome. Um, I love Crazy. I think Crazy is an awesome book. Uh, um, and, you know, I think it would be awesome if our heroes team up with, uh, you know, the guys from Crazy. Um, you know, so we try to, in Comic Republic, and this is why, we, Africa has been wrongly stigmatized with culture. And let me mm. explain, right? So when you think of Africa, most people think of the past, mm. old culture, right? People wearing animal skin, working around bare chested, you know, carrying spears and all of that. And even though that is our history, mm. the same as, you know, the musketeers, sword fighting is the history of a lot of European countries, right? Mm. You don't exactly see Africans walking about in leopard skin and carrying spares anymore. No, we all have the latest iPhones and that's the truth, right? Mm. And so we try in our comics to represent an Africa of today. And so if we're going to go cultural, we actually will tell stories that are from the past that depict actual culture and not try and force culture into today's world more than it should be, right? And so our heroes seem a little bit more modern than so-called Africans might like. And <laughs> I, I find that the book itself, Crazy, has a good balance of that where the character himself, you know, is a young guy, you know, you see him with his dreads, his t-shirt, you know, a nice African look on his chest, and even his costume, you know, is a good mix between, you know, the modern Africa and our cultural heritage. And I really like that. And the storytelling, the art, you know, is just beastly. So I think, you know, come any of our heroes will do well in the um, crazy universe and vice versa. Um, so the first time I read um, Guardian Prime, right, I think everyone has the same sensation, right? Wait, let me go back because I don't want it to seem like shade. I talked about number ones coming out in 2015, 2014. And it was when you, right. yeah, 20, 20, 30, like there's that whole like period, right? After Age of Ultron, people just started rocking up with their own comics. And most number ones that you see are derivative of some type of archetype, which is totally fine, right? I've, I've, I've spoken at length about how if you don't let the initiation of growth be somewhat derivative, you won't get where it needs to be, right? You have to let us start making content and then get better at it. We can't just off the bat, because if you compare our comics to Batman, Superman, who have been at it for plus 80 years, right? They're in their 1000s with their action comics, with their detective comics, right? There are usually teams of people that do very many things that we don't even know about. You could research them, but the actual production pipeline doesn't show us how those roles fit into the completion or mastery of a comic, right? So when I read Guardian Prime number one, it's obvious it's like, oh, this is a Superman archetype, right? But people will move on to number two because it's African. We, we accept that there is a certain level that we should aspire to going forwards. And you definitely deliver by Guardian Prime number eight. Like I'm sitting there, the art is now amazing. The story is now amazing. The lettering, the design, everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't wanna guess you up too much. Again, like I said in the beginning, I don't wanna guess you up too much, but really I am in awe of the journey that you've taken to get to the quality and standard that you're presenting now, which has not been easy, it is not. So I wanna ask you, um, to someone who's in Africa, anywhere in the, on the continent, if they're coming out with a, with a comic idea or they're stuck and they have that doubt, what would you tell them to make them see the gap between the number, where they are in their mind with their number one and how they can get to your current Guardian Prime issue? I know that's a broad question, but like interpret it as you will. Easy. It's pretty easy. So you answered it first. First is create, just create, start with creating. But most importantly, 
stay hungry for quality. Be hungry, constantly be hungry. It's something that we do at Comic Republic. We're always like, okay, done. What can we do better, right? We have the whole team come together to take a book apart. Every single time we do a book, we have a review and we allow people to be brutal. Tell me what you hate about this book. Recommend what could be better, right? And then we're constantly researching on what's new. We literally have an R&D team. Mm. So it's stay hungry for quality. I can't repeat it more. And here's the problem. It's a problem that I think we have on the continent altogether is this satisfaction on effort instead of on results. As long as we feel like we've put the effort in, we feel yes. it's okay. But if you check most European countries, it's the other way around. The focus is on the results. And so they do everything necessary to, to get the desired results. We feel once we've done all that we can, we're good. We'll always stay mediocre. But if we constantly focus on the best quality, I am going to turn out the best quality comic. If I need to draw it again, if I need to review it, if I need to get that person that doesn't like me to review it, if I need to get somebody who's really good at something to do it again, if I need to pay a little extra, that's what I would say. Focus, a hunger for quality. And then, but like you said, first start with just create. You just have to keep creating. No matter what you do, create. And then hunger for quality at every step you get better dope 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 i feel like even though you're hearing these questions for the first time you have answers which is like <laughs> it's just so fluid for you man it's just like ah i got answers i got a little book of answers down there like um before time runs out um so i've researched a couple of african comic book models or just comic book models in general but looking at them through case studies of african comics um, there are people who do Kickstarters, which is very difficult depending on you know, where you are because that's not accessible to us. There are some people who will do a day job and then fund their comic and then put it out that way and then that's a whole other thing. Um, there are people who will get ads into their comic, which is definitely like where you want to go with in terms of getting it funded and putting it out or printing it uh, frequently. What, and wait, go back one sentence, Bill. Um, looking at Comic Republic's model, which is obviously a very successful one, um, when someone is trying to, this is always for people who just want to get into comics right now, when they see that you are putting out content for free, what do you tell them um, in terms of making this a viable career for them um, or, you know, paying the bills? Like, we're not even talking about getting to, like, international comic cons or panels. We're talking about how do you, how do you tell your parents that this, you know, I've, I've paid electricity, I've paid data, Wi-Fi, whatnot, whatnot. What, what do you tell them? Um, I tell, I show them what my business plan is, right? Uh, and the business plan is not making comics, right? I keep, I tell people this. Guess what? The comics are actually an advertising platform for the real business. Right. And I think that's the problem most creatives have. We are just so passionate about the creative part of it. We don't have a business. If you're going to go into real estate, you need to get an investment to buy land and to build a house. In the first place. Right. So first things first, what is you need to have a clear part of, OK, this is how I'm going to get this investment. And, you know, for example, you could get investment either via shares, you can get investment by getting loans and things like that. So you need to have a clear business plan. And that's why I'll tell any creator who wants to start. Have a business plan. Do your research. How do people in this business make money? And the other mistake that we keep making is that we think that we're selling prints. The comic business has gone beyond selling physical prints. What you're doing is that you're creating IPs. So maybe mm. look at the business creating IPs and figure out how you're going to make your comic books or your comic business that business but it's no longer a business it's now an entertainment and ip business and that's how you need to do it that way you get serious investors. and the truth is we raking let me keep that for now but <laughs> but it has been very successful 
And this is solely because it's actually a business and not a creative endeavor. Yes, 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 yes. Yes to everything you said. You know, like when, when a teacher's like really, and when you like a teacher and they're just, they just put ticks all over your essay. They're not even reading it at some point. They're like, yes, this is all, it's flowing, it's amazing. Now we have uh, Gina giving a presentation on Comic Republic's very long journey, as well as an introduction to their app. Gina, please let us know. All right, thank you very much, guys. Welcome to Comic Republic. Comic Republic is a character-based entertainment company with one mission, African heroes as icons. We tell compelling stories about African doing great things um, and at the same time serving the world um, like any other race. Um, at Comic Republic, we believe that it's not about color, race, gender, sexuality. It's all about the will to do good. And once you have that will, you are a hero. We have a huge gallery of superheroes and characters, male, female, short, tall, funny, evil, you know, um, just basically to ensure that when you come into a universe, you're going to have so much fun. If you're into any kind of storytelling, you will find something for you. And we do have loads of interesting characters with, you know, again, the aim is to push the African culture, its values, and to show the world that we're not what the Western media has portrayed us to be, but at the core of it, we're good, awesome people who actually have the capacity to once again save the world. Our lead character is Guardian Prime, um, uh, is Guardian Prime, and his major, he, he's, his power, let me start with that so you understand some of our values, is faith. Um, he believes in himself, he believes in himself, and you know, the more faith he has in himself and his uh, ability, the stronger he gets. Whatever he believes that he can do, he most likely will be able to do it. This, we tell this particular story, or this character is one of our favorite because he is a reflection of what we believe humanity can be, as long as we have faith in ourselves. And as Africans, one of the, we are, we are people who are largely religious, uh, we're people who believe in faith, and you know, we want to share this with the rest of the world. We also have loads of interesting stories that talk about our culture. Um, one of those is called Ito. Ito is focused on African or Nigerian Yoruba mythology, where we have the gods who directly or indirectly influence and affect our daily lives. Um, and, you know, we use that to tell. Ito in Yoruba language means storytelling, um, a storytelling with morals. And because we are very moralistic people, we have basically a moral or, 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 or a myth for every aspect of our lives guiding us to be better people. We use it all to share the stories to the world, hoping that we may share, you know, the values that have pushed us, you know, for centuries um, to thrive and to be who we are. Another one is Black Moon, and Black Moon is about, you know, African masks and cultures, um, and it's our version of manga, which we will now call Inca. So let's just say Black Moon is an Africa Inca story where, you know, we show the value of our traditional art via mask. Uh, we, our characters are based in, you know, all sorts of environments. Comic Republic is one big universe and our characters all live in that same universe, but in diverse places. You know, we have the fantasy, we have the traditional, we have the modern. And most importantly is we also focus a lot on our gods. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard of stories like Thor or Odin. Well, let me introduce you to Shango. Shango, for example, is the um, Yoruba god of thunder. And you can see him here with Ara. Ara is um, his ally. She basically is lightning who manifests herself as um, a person and then he uses her to in battle to defeat his enemies. And we have loads of other characters, female, male. If you're into music, we have another character called Beats, you know, that shows the more modern side of Africa, the more modern side of um, culture, hip hop, music. 
Um, and then, yeah, like I said, my favorite character, Guardian Prime. Um, but we also have, most importantly, very, very, very strong female leads. And one of the characters that we're very proud of is Iriti Morami, as you can see here, riding a lion. Um, Iriti Morami, if, if you look into the story of Ife, and there is this mythology or this folklore that says that um, the world came out from Ife, well, the woman who saved the kingdom of Ife from pending doom was called Morami. And we thought it was defeating to, you know, portray her as a superhero. And we have um, the legend of Morami talking about how one woman, uh, at a time when women were not recognized, was able to save a kingdom that bet the world. That is the story of Morami. And going further down, we have her descendant called Bidemi. She's the young girl here who, uh, in modern day times, is the daughter of She's a sport girl. She goes to school. You know, she does every single thing that she has a boyfriend. She learns parkour. But at the end of, um, at the bottom of it, she, she finds out that she's the descendant of the great Morimi and has to pick up the mantle to provide hope to the world. We have loads of interesting characters, like I said, no, no matter what you're in, sci-fi, mythos, um, teenager type of stories, Comic Republic is the place for you and you have so much fun. We are very, very into focused on making sure that your, your experience with reading our comics is, if not the best, um, it is what, what I would call universally or the, the, the standard for, we have something for everyone, no matter what type of um, story or genre you're into, Comic Republic has something for you. For example, Dio is uh, what we'll call African shonen, you know, a story about, you know, young, a young man who is an outcast, but at the end of the day, we'll find out that he's the most powerful warrior um, and, you know, showing the power of the spear. spear. We believe that the spear actually is greater than the sword. And, you know, um, Trial of Despair is a book that shows that part of African mythology, you know, showing how effective our weapons are, which Despair was one of our greatest weapons in African culture, um, you know, basically touching on our rich heritage. But most importantly is Comic Republic's drive to create an awesome user experience, reading experience. We want you to be able to read our comic books um, read about African mythology and have so much fun and to do that with ease, no matter where you are in the world. And because of that, we have actively invested in developing um, an app that has the easiest interface for you to read. Not only is it user friendly, it's modern, it's trendy, it's neat. Um, it meets all international standards when it comes to user experience. And that's the Comic Republic app. Um, from the moment you hit the home page, you are able to just soft through it with so much ease, find any of the books you want, all of them completely eye-catching, as you can see here. But most importantly, um, what, we, we, what we're very proud of is the fact that our app is a progressive web app and also um, a native app. So if you wanted to download our app, you go to the Google Store and you download the native app. But beyond that, you don't need to go to any app store to download our app altogether. You can download it from any OS, no matter the OS that you're using, be it iOS, Windows, whatever it is. And that's because it's a progressive web app. This is a new technology that you know is catching on with all the big industries and we have brought it home to Africa, where all you need to do is visit our website, um, click on a few buttons and immediately you have our app on your phone in a matter of seconds, not larger than 3 MB, and you'll be able to access all of these awesome stories free. All of this just so that we can push the African narrative to the world. So my question is, why not? Why not, you know, visit the Comic Republic app, visit our platform, go to our website and download our comics. So what's our ambition at Comic Republic? We want to create a franchise that Africans both at home and in diaspora will be proud of. We want to create characters that we would be a franchise that you know generations to come can experience 
you know, what it means like or what it is to be an African through and through. And, you know, with Comic Republic, we plan on, you know, exploring uh, with our IPs, motion pictures, um, TV series, animations. We're going to go into gaming, uh, both mobile and console gaming. Um, of course, you should expect some merchandising um in the form of clothing out of items laptop covers pens whatever it is that you use in your daily life and you know for the next generation we're going to have loads of action figures and tradables and generally just put you know uh, you know the beauty of africa in every home everywhere you go to so that you know in no time let me put it this way, the whole world will be proud to be Africa, not just Africans alone, everyone else, you know, will want to be the icons that we say that we are or the superheroes that we portray to be. So why not come on this journey with us in reshaping the world, reshaping the perception of the continent and showing the world that even people from Africa can save it. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, that was such an amazing presentation. Like, the sleekness of the app it's and then you said it's progressive web so i just got a new ipad um and i was super worried so i was seeing oh you know play store play store place and i was like ah. i already read it on the website so like it's not it's anything it didn't think but a chicken wing um so now to hear that you guys are using progressive web app technology that's that's amazing it's very modern very sleek and you under add to home screen and that's it download and then and then and then it is what it is like we yep. see you always making moves um speaking of making moves um so you had spoken we were speaking about um ip rather you were speaking about it we were speaking about ip and um creation and how comics are just advertised they're literally just pamphlets for your ip just effectively it's a little booklet that gives you an insight into the world. Um, I mean, as you see with most Marvel movies, those moviegoers don't, they don't know about Spider-Man. I sat in, what, what was this movie? Uh, in, in Infinity War. And uh, Peter Parker shows up at the beginning of the movie. And this girl next to me is like, is that Spider-Man? And I'm like, have you not been watching for the last 10 movies? Um, and I was just like, that's just, so exactly what you're saying, um, it's just advertising for these, uh, for a different medium, right? That can be adapted however which way. Um, so I wanted to know, right? There's this idea that if you make it in, in a comic book, it'll get adapted onto Netflix, right? That's, that's one of my dreams, it's a lot of people's dreams, right? Um, and the face you're making is very relevant because I'm gonna ask, can we not adapt onto like Nollywood? Can we not adapt into our own spheres of, of creation. Yes, I know that there's economies of scale and other like country-based limitations, but do you think there is a way forward with saying filmmakers in our home countries, no matter where you are, we have this idea, can you adapt it? Do you think that's a way to go? Or do you think Netflix, do you think making it elsewhere and then bringing it back home and saying you can find it on Netflix is the way to go? Let me know. Can I bust your mind a bit? Yes. Yeah, the movie business is universal. Why are we so focused about making it in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, what really matters is, so for example, think about a Zimbabwean studio that films in the US. Doesn't matter. It's a studio, a Zimbabwean studio. It's for Zimbabwe, right? So mm -hmm. I'm wondering that why can't we have Nigerian studios, right? Getting from China and record wherever it needs to be made, right? It will still be a Nigerian movie. And that's what Netflix is doing. That's what these guys are doing. The movie industry in the US, most of it doesn't come from the US anymore. To be honest, most of them are getting their investment from China, from companies like Sony, right? Who make electronics, right? So maybe we're trying to isolate the movie business instead of inclusion. It should just be let's make movies and let's make it any way possible. It doesn't have to be Hollywood. Yes. Let's bring all the people who know what they're doing. You know, we can shoot in South Africa. We can shoot wherever, you know, we get the investment from. And why are we not going to banks to say, look, we want to make a Nigerian movie or we want the actor to appear in Bangkok because we believe that it will sell out in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. and how much you gain in foreign revenue. 
I mean, as long as you can prove the finance to the bankers, they don't care where you do it. Yeah. All right. So that's what I think. I think let's just focus on making movies and let's look at the business of making it and not where it is made. What matters okay. is who's making it. Are we using our actors? Because I mean, if you look at Hollywood movies, you find out that they fly the actors to different parts of the world. Why can't we fly our actors and actresses to different places if we get a budget? Because my- of visa restrictions. <laughs> <laughs> you will be shocked how easy it is to get a visa if there's if there's there yeah, i know what like when the, when the money's there yeah, that's, yeah. That's, then it's not a visa you just flash your money that's that's different wait do airports take bribes <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's not about even you know it's not about the bribe it's about hiring the right agency that knows the right buttons to press that just sounds like a bribe with extra steps <laughs> um, that's that's a fantastic answer. Um, I really love it. Let us fly our creative talent where it needs to be. It's still ours, right? It's still in our hands. It doesn't matter where it's made. Yeah. Like again, it sounds like you you've heard all of these questions that I'm literally I'm making these questions up as I go, and you're like, no, I have an answer. No, I have an answer. <laughs> um, GD, it's been an amazing experience talking to you. I've been waiting for at least five years. Uh, to have a conversation like this. So thank you so much uh, for making time, not just for me, but for creatives who might not have access to you or access to um, creatives in developing spaces. Um, so thanks again for your time. I know that's, it's, I sounded like a broken record, but we really do appreciate it. Um, so keep creating, keep moving, uh, keep the fire burning. Thank you for having me. And as, as an African brother, please don't wait for five years. You know, just send us <laughs> You know, get a phone number and, you know, we'll reply. <laughs> and like WhatsApp was hard back then. You see a foreign number, you block. Like you just see plus two, so I, 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 block. Hmm? What do you want? Texas, I block. <laughs> so yeah, no, definitely find, find, find your email on, you know, your pages, contact details. Don't do what I did. You know, there is an about page, there's a contact page. Uh, talk to the people that you need to talk to. Speed up the process. We, there are people who came before us who we didn't get to talk to, but we want to be as accessible as possible. Message us, tell us what your pitfalls are. I mean, don't just slide in our DMs and say, hey, bro, that's, that's, <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Do you, you see Gina's face like, hey, hey, bro, as your first email, not a text message, as an email, your, your email says, hey, bro, nah, swerve. Um, but other than that, uh, we're very open to dialogue and conversation. So do pull through. Let's talk. Uh, let's create. Let's collaborate. Awesome. Um, and definitely love love to see your content. Uh, we will drop down your links down in the comments. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us uh, before we head out? Oh, yes. Um, I'd like to say that please, we release the comic book every week, every two weeks. Sorry. It's free. Um, the reason why we want to, why we do that, why we take the pain to give it out free is because we want African art, African stories to be told. We want it to get to as many people as it should be. And all we ask is that you actually just visit our website, which is www.decomicpublic.com. Our Instagram pages, drop us a shout out, read our books, spread the word, let Africa know what we're doing, let the world know what we're doing. And in no time, like I said, we will dominate. In no time, we will dominate. I like those final words. Thank you so much, today for joining us. Uh, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Drop down a comment below. If you have questions for us or Jide, uh about any of his titles, do visit his website. Uh, hit that subscribe button for us. It really does help. And then hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our content. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.